Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Jess and today we are going to be going over five of my New Year's resolutions for 2022 for gardening and whether that be in the plant room or outside. I have a few for both so we'll go we'll have kind of a little handful um, of each. One thing though I did want to tell you guys about that I realized I actually never announced on my channel um, and this is kind of my 2022 surprise for you to start off your New Year's with um, but I am pregnant. I don't know if you guys have seen um, a sneak peek of this belly <laughs> um, in any of my other videos or um, on social media but I am 37 weeks pregnant so I am in the last stretch, the baby should be here by the end of January, and I'm so excited to share you get share with you guys um, our growing family. Uh, I will probably give you guys a nursery tour at some point, um, so stay tuned for that. But I realized that I never really told anybody on here that that was what was going on. So because of that, um, I have been fairly absent this past year um, I've been fairly tired and just kind of focusing on getting through <laughs> uh, our year I have been gardening I just have been kind of doing it in the background not filming much of it so I just wanted to give you guys that update because I really kind of just let it slip my mind so stay tuned I'm sure we will have our little boy here soon any day now so let's jump into the new year's resolutions because I'm very excited to share them with you. We're gonna talk about our New Year's resolutions for gardening. First and foremost, I am very interested in knowing what your guys' New Year's resolutions are for your garden this year, so please go comment those down below right now. I kind of have this separated into um, a few for in the plant room um, and kind of my house plants, and then I also have a few for outside in the actual outdoor garden, which I'm hoping to show you more of this year as well. So let's start with inside first because that's probably what I'm going to be addressing initially um, as we go into kind of more winter um, this January. I'll probably be doing a lot inside here. So number one is to keep a carnivorous plant alive. I <laughs> tried so many times over the last two years to keep them alive and have somehow killed every single one that I've owned. And I have a theory that you always have to kill a plant before you truly learn how to keep it alive. Um, if you can keep it alive on the first try, that's great, amazing. However, if it takes one before you figured it out, that's like the normal standard, at least for me anyway. I always tend to kill one before I actually am successful with the second one. So I had bought multiple, I bought the, um, a handful of some from California carnivores and got them shipped in kind of, what would have that been? About two years ago, probably. I had sundews, I had a ping. Um, I think those are what I ordered from them. One of my sundews I believe went dormant or one of them went dormant and I for whatever reason did not think about them going dormant because we were inside and I just threw it away before realizing that that's probably what happened. Um, the other ones I ended up killing I completely forgot to water some, some of them. Mainly I grow succulents as you can see from my massive succulent shells behind me and so I rarely ever have to water and so I think that's kind of where I got the most tripped up is I just completely forgot that they required more water than the rest of my plants um, and kind of like to sit in that water. I did end up keeping um, a different one that I bought. I believe it was a Nepenthes. Um, it was a pitcher plant of some sort. Um, but I did end up keeping that one alive for a lot longer, but then again forgot about it because I tucked it in a specific corner and just kind of forgot he was there because he was little. Um, and then I had another pitcher plant at some point that I also just let completely dry out. So I am four for four for, for killing all of my carnivorous plants. So, and I love them. I think they are so fascinating. Um, I, I usually can keep them alive for a few months and then I either forget about them or something happens or whatever. So that is my first goal is I wanna get another carnivorous plant and I want to actually keep it alive because in terms of the 
fungus gnat issues, they are definitely the best solution that I have had for my fungus gnats. And with my seed starting coming up for the vegetable garden, it usually brings on some sort of pest. So I would really like to get my hands on, an ever, on another carnivorous plant um, before we get into that season and have it thriving by that point. And then number two for kind of the indoor houseplant area is growing more succulents from seed. I bought a ton of succulent seeds online from, I think it was um, rareplant.me, um, but I started some of them, but I never started the rest of them. So I have a ton of succulent seeds that I never did anything with. And so that's gonna be another one of my New Year's resolutions is to actually grow those because I have all of the tools that I need, all of the seeds, the ability to do it, the knowledge to do it. I just have to get them started and actually grow them. So um, I don't know why I haven't been, but that's gonna be another one of my resolutions for this year is to actually grow those because I've grown Lowies and Hedgehog ca Cactus from seed and they've turned out beautiful. And so I love the process and it does take a while, which is probably why I haven't been motivated enough to just get them started, but they, turn out amazing and I could have a whole bunch of different types of really rare and random succulents that I probably wouldn't be able to get my hands on otherwise. So I think that's gonna be my second one is to actually utilize those seeds before they go bad. If you are interested in growing succulents from seed, I will include the links up here somewhere and also down in the description box. And I would highly recommend going and checking out those videos because it is a really easy process. Um, there are several parts to the series and so I'll make sure to include those down there. Um, and I highly encourage you to go watch them because it's very informative and they're not really all that hard. They just take a while um, to get going. So if you have some patience and have a little space to spare, um, I highly recommend doing it because it's very interesting to try um, and you could be really successful and get a lot of fun varieties that you normally wouldn't be able to purchase from like your no local nursery or anything. So then for the next three, these are for the outdoor garden. Um, what I kind of like to do with setting my goals, I only wanted to give myself five New Year's resolutions for the garden just because I feel like if you go any further than that, you can have other goals, but if you go any further than that, I feel like I at least tend to just not do any of them or not accomplish any of them fully. So I'm trying to really limit um, and make it very feasible and very doable and um, make myself have all of the capabilities of being able to actually get to that point. The other thing that I like to do is I like to kind of take my biggest weakness areas and focus on fixing those first then kind of my other New Year's res or then kind of the other goals that I would have for the garden just because it's kind of one of those things where if I'm really bad at one thing I can't accomplish the other things very well if I don't fix some of these basics. So for me, watering. I am the worst at actually watering flowers and containers and anything in my garden is just impossible for me. I forget and then it's hot or we go on vacation or whatever, it just never crosses my mind and I can usually do it like one day a week successfully, which is not helpful in the summer. So this was my goal last year, but my goal was to set up irrigation throughout our entire, all of our flower beds. I think I got about 50% of the way done. So. I think our front of house is good. We have irrigation, um, we have a sprinkler system for our lawn, thankfully, because that would never have gotten watered. Um, but we added drip irrigation to front flower beds that we made. Um, and I think that's actually doing really well. I want to rearrange my flowers in them, but that's kind of like a different little project. But I think the irrigation wise, we got down. Um, there is one, flower bed that needs a little bit of assistance, but I kind of, it's supposed to be getting hit with the sprinklers and so it's not really getting enough water for some plants. So that one I might redo, but otherwise, I think the front of house is actually pretty good. Otherwise for the vegetable garden, we do have it set up on a sprinkler system, but it wastes so much water. And I think I'd have a lot less disease problems um, 
if I'm just watering the root system and not the leaves. So I think if we kind of focused more on a drip irrigation system for the vegetable garden, I think that would go a lot better than the sprinkler system that I have set up right now. Any containers um, or we have some other flower beds throughout the property, those I wanna get on an irrigation system because they just are completely neglected during the summer because I have other things that I'd rather be doing than watering my plants. And so I think if I can just get those set up to be on an automatic system, that will save me so much heartache because essentially what's happening right now is I put in all of the time and effort to plant up the area or the pots or whatever. I grow the stuff from seed. So I'm putting in a ton of work and then I'm just letting it die outside. So I need to get those um, on a drip irrigation system because training myself to water these plants has just not been successful year after year. So I think if I can get them on a drip irrigation, that'll be the most successful method for me. And because we already fixed the front, I have all of the tools and supplies already sitting in our garage. So I just need to use them. Then my fourth New Year's resolution, and this one's not as fun, but I think it's kind of needed, is lawn care. So I really want to create a healthy lawn this year. And I'm not like a huge fan of the typical, you know, green grass lawn type situation. I love more flower beds and food areas and um, being able to really utilize that space better. Just growing a bunch of grass um, isn't usually what I would go for. However, we have used our yard a ton. And so we're constantly playing yard games and having friends over and um, kind of hosting in those areas. And so having those lawn areas in order to actually do those activities in, um, like playing cornhole or whatever, um, has actually been really nice. And so one thing that I want to switch and focus on is creating a nice weed free lawn. Um, I don't care about dandelions as much. I actually like to see dandelions because one, they're not hurting anything. And two, the bees love them. And so whenever I see dandelions, I actually get kind of excited because, and then I go out and look for any honeybees, um, just because I know there is a neighbor somewhere that has a honey hive and we got so many bees last year and it was amazing to see. So I do like to see those bees and it's usually early enough in the season that we're not outside anyway. And so I don't care if there's a bunch of bees on the ground. I don't have to worry about stepping on them or anything, but I, don't like thistles <laughs> and we have so many thistles in certain parts of our yard or just other random weeds that I think are really kind of choking out our grass and so or we have some dead spots and kind of an uneven surface so I really want to make it kind of a safe place for people to run around barefoot essentially is kind of the goal um and actually be able to feel comfortable in that space whereas right now it's just kind of an open area and you have to wear shoes and you might step on something uncomfortable or whatever but um and or roll your ankle if you're running around so i really want to try to focus on getting a nice healthy lawn that we can feel comfortable using and playing in and then my fifth and this is also kind of one that i've been working on over the years i will say i did significantly better this year than I did the previous year, um, even being as tired as I was being pregnant. Um, but I still had a ton of improvement that I could do, and that is wasting less produce. And so we grow a lot of our vegetables from our for our garden from seed or purchase them at the nursery or whatever. Um, and so we put in a ton of time and effort on the forefront. And then one of the things that I have always struggled with is I'm great at harvesting the whole growing and through harvest process I am usually very successful at. It is the using the produce and preserving part that I have always struggled with. And so what I've found is normally I'm kind of on the run. And so, and I'm sure a lot of you are too. And so what I've been trying to do is come up with ways that I can immediately either use or preserve my produce. And so, for example, um, the few things that worked really well for me 
this last year and kind of the year previous um, between those two is so for our Roma tomatoes when I'm harvesting as long as they look pretty healthy I will harvest when they're fresh or when they're ripe um, and completely red and I will just throw it in a freezer bag um, and put it in the freezer and so I don't have to let it sit out on my counter um, if they're not ripe yet and they fall off I can put them on my counter but then as soon as they're ripe I put them in the freezer and so garden to freezer directly I'm sure there are a lot of benefits for canning with fresh tomatoes um, instead of frozen ones but I have found what works best for me and is still tasty and delicious is from my vine on my tomato plant to a freezer bag and then after the season is well done and you're in winter having a weekend to actually can your tomatoes has been so much easier and for those I usually um, I've made pizza sauce one year and then this year we're going to be making marinara sauce and I will actually be posting a video on this um, probably in the next few weeks um, so be mindful for that and watch for that because this process has saved me so many wasted tomatoes because I just don't feel like everything ripens at the same time and to go through the effort of cooking it all down, it's so much easier to just do in one sitting um, and just get it all done and not have to do it multiple times throughout the year or waste the tomatoes in between. So something like that has been my ideal, that's like perfect. Things like that, I really just need to have a plan of what to do with either both both the fresh produce side of from the garden to my plate immediate use, but you can only eat so much corn in one sitting. So for the rest of it, I'm gonna slice and freeze the kernels um, and then we will use those throughout the year. So this is really kind of my goal of getting much less much less waste and so i think the thing that was kind of the most wasteful for us this year is we grew a ton of hot peppers um, i really wanted to make a bunch of hot sauces and that just didn't happen and so i would have the pepper sitting on my counter for however long until it was essentially rotted and then i would just throw it away because i didn't feel like I could do much with it. And so um, that's one of my biggest goals is to um, really focus on wasting less produce that I put in so much time and effort into growing. And for my bonus New Year's resolution, we live in a very cold climate and so we're a zone five. However, I really want to grow succulents outside and I don't, I think I have only a handful of hen and chicks outside currently and what I would really like to do is create an entire hen and chick section. I have no idea where I'm going to put this. I have not put much thought into it other than I know I want to have a hen and chick garden outside. So that's why it's kind of a bonus New Year's resolution of I have no idea if it's feasible or where I'm going to put it or any of the plans for it. I just want it to kind of happen because I think that would be really fun. So that's kind of my sixth and bonus New Year's resolution. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Comment what your guys' gardening New Year's resolutions are. I'd love to see them. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.